Uh, thank you. So uh, what I've come here to talk to you guys today about is about Chrome DP, which is a new way to drive the web. This is a piece of technology that we built at Broncos, basically, to handle scraping on an industrial scale. Uh, but the applications that you can use it for goes way beyond scraping. You can use it for profiling web pages. You can use it for a bunch of other things. So just to give you an overview of what it is, is Chrome DP is the package that provides um, a direct way to control Chrome or any uh, browser that supports the Chrome debugging protocol, hence the name Chrome DP, uh, directly through Go. So no external dependencies are needed. You don't need to use like a Selenium farm. You don't need to use Chrome driver or any of that uh, kind of stuff. And it exposes, what's really nice is that it exposes the really low level actions inside of uh, a web browser, which is much, much more powerful than what you could actually get if you were using like web element on Selenium or some other way. Um, and so it is being used in production today. And the other really kind of cool thing is, is that uh, we have these high level actions and tasks that allow you to compose different reusable scraping or profiling or uh, whatever uh, kind of actions that you need for Chrome. Uh, so kind of the old model, um, just real, real quick show of hands. Has anybody here uh, done scraping before on a web page or try to get data out of a website and had problems doing it? OK. So most people kind of know the, this old model, which is, uh, or at least if you were trying to do it in Go, it, and I'm sorry that I don't have a, a, a graphic for this, but you would use Go. You would use some kind of a Selenium package. You would you then have to use Selenium, maybe, or you would use maybe Chrome driver directly. Uh, and then uh, you would actually then have to deploy Chrome. So uh, the new model that we have now is just basically Go plus Chrome DP and headless shell. So uh, Chrome DP was also written to essentially take advantage of the new headless aspects that is in the Chromium, uh, in the Chromium source tree now. So while you can't, while there is no like a direct uh, static uh, ability to embed headless shell today, we are working on embedding headless shell completely via a, a go gettable package, right? Um, that may not ever work for anything other than Linux, but we are aiming to do that eventually. Uh, meaning that you will have a pre-compiled version of headless shell that's essentially integrated and you can just use directly. Of course, you still have to go through kind of the whole serial socket implementation and I'll get, I'll over, I'll do a little bit of an overview because you need to understand that to understand how this package works. Um, and, but that's coming up. So a question is, is why would you go ahead and build this? So at Broncos, what we're doing is we are scraping bank websites to essentially get customer account data. And very similar to what mint.com does in the US. Uh, we've decided to go with a different approach because we want to create a uh, scraping package that is essentially forward compatible. So even if the underlying website changes, hypothetically our code will still work and we have kind of have some more high level advanced stuff that's not open source that does that. But what's really great is that uh, some of the other reasons that we built it is reduced dependencies. Browsers have essentially been modernized now. Almost all major browsers are essentially you know, WebKit or Blink derived now. And so there's not really a reason to kind of do testing through the old way with Selenium. I, I'm not an advocate of some kind of like, you know, monoculture like you know, web browsering engine, but the reality is, is all of these you know, web browsers today are just essentially based off of WebKit. So you don't really need to test really outside of Chrome. And it makes what, what, I would, why, what I would be an advocate of today is to do things like smoke tests and not really full on unit tests um, inside of your, uh, on the UI side. And instead, leave, your, you know, leave tests at a lower level and then just build smoke tests. And I think Chrome DP makes it exceptionally easy and is perfectly suited for that task. Um, Kind of the other thing is, is that there are a couple other packages that try to drive Chrome directly, but uh, I was very frustrated with using them because a lot of them use either reflection or something like that, and they were not really kind of what I thought were production level or ready for a large scale. And so they had large memory overhead, problems with like just efficiency, they were buggy, et cetera. So 
what we've done with Chrome DP is that we've created a, um, a package that is fully, you know, quote unquote, idiomatic Go that is fully type safe, extremely fast, and it allows you to uh, really low level control of launching, you know, Chrome uh, or other headless processes. Uh, so for us at Broncos, what we're, uh, what we're excited about is that it allows us to use an extremely small footprint. So before we were using actually Selenium uh, for what we were doing, and we migrated our code off of Selenium you know, style integration uh, to you know, directly to Go, and that essentially allowed us to reduce our, our overhead in the cloud by you know, more than 50% essentially. Um, so I'm gonna get into to actually the Chrome DP. I'm, I will showcase how to use it uh, for writing unit tests and stuff like that, but first you kinda need to understand what it does and how it works with Chrome. So Chrome exposes the, uh, the debugging protocol through basically, uh, so, sorry. Uh, so the, the, <laughs> the debugging protocol is this async WebSocket based uh, protocol that is quite frustrating to use. Uh, and it, because of the nature of the Chromium source tree, it's a, it's a constantly changing target which is one of the reasons why the other approaches to integrating with, uh, to integrating Grow directly with Chrome before have not really been uh, done well because most of the code has been either manually written and not generated from the protocol.json file. So, Chrome de so the Chrome debugging protocol is based off of two uh, JSON files in the Chromium source tree, which is browser protocol and JS protocol. Uh, so, those are combined and then those define the high level uh, API targets or quote unquote domains in the uh, Chromium uh, naming scheme. Uh, and each one of those domains uh, are basically defined commands, events, and types. So that JSON protocol provides essentially a one-to-one -one mapping for uh, targets that you manage through the Chrome debugging protocol. So you can connect to each one, which is, if you're familiar with uh, Chrome DevTools, we're doing the exact same thing, it's just that we're doing it through you know, a pragmatic you know, way with Go as opposed to you know, pointing and clicking. But it's essentially the same API calls uh, that are being sent to it as what you would use in Chrome DevTools. So commands and events are just sent over a simple WebSocket connection, and they're just JSON encoded like types, right? They're just raw data, essentially. Um, so here are some quick just CDP resources. I just wanted to make cover this and put this in here. I will put these slides online, so uh, if you need to find any of this. I have two Docker images, one for building Chrome, uh, sorry, for, uh, for building Chrome headless, or you know, headless shell, essentially, and then I have a Chromium builder, which is a standardized Docker image for uh, creating a build image, because we are, we haven't quite gotten there yet at Broncos, but our plan is, is to completely use the Chromium source tree as it comes out. So whenever you know, Google pushes a change to the Chromium tree, we will update our entire build environment. Um, but we haven't quite gotten to that kind of level yet. And we're kind of manually updating Chrome as it comes out. So uh, there are two major components to Chrome DP, which is we have an automatic tool that generates the uh, low-level protocol uh, code, uh, which is called Chrome DP Gen, which is inside the Chrome DP uh, source tree. And it's actually kind of really unique and innovative, in my opinion, about the way it, it works. And of course, I'm biased. So, uh, But this is kind of an overview of how it works, is uh, we read the protocol.json that defines those domains. We fix it up to make that code essentially uh, so instead of just doing a one-to-one -one generation, we apply fix-ups to make the code more, uh, the resulting generated code more Go-like and more idiomatic, right? And we do things like fix typos and spellings and things like that. Uh, so what happens is that the Chrome DP gen then generates a, a standalone package for each Chrome domain. So for instance, there's the input domain, package, the page domain, the DOM, uh, domain, and each one of those maps to, an in, to a separate package in the Chrome tree. Uh, sorry, in the Chrome DP uh, source tree. Uh, and then we essentially use easy JSON from MailRU to uh, do our uh, JSON encoding and decoding so that we're not using the standard 
uh, JSON decoders. It significantly speeds things up, which matters when you're sending down the wire thousands and thousands and thousands of JSON encoded messages. Uh, we just do this because I did some uh, early tests and found that it was significantly faster. Uh, and the, just so you kind of know, the API that we generate is a, a kind of inspired by the Google API uh, clients. I was, I'm very, I, I love using the Google APIs for interfacing with their services. I think that they're very straightforward and like logical and, and that's what I designed this API around. And then the other thing too that we do with the generated code is that we, high, we handle some high level things like base64 encoding decoding so that you never have to like, you know, manually do that kind of stuff in the uh, API. So you just send a byte slice that's a raw byte slice uh, uh, as an example. So for instance, in the, page, in the page Chrome domain, there is an API call that allows you to take a screenshot of the, uh, of, you know, of the screen or whatever, uh, or well, whatever is in the rendering viewport at the time. Uh, so instead of, instead of having to manually decode the base64 encoded data, we just do that for you instead. Um, so using the generated domain APIs, so all of the domain APIs sit under Git, uh, you know, this package space, which is github.com, knq, chrome dp, cdp, forward slash name of the domain. So for instance, cdp forward slash page, forward slash input, etc. And that's just basically a, it tries to be as much of a one-to-one -one mapping uh, from the uh, what's defined in protocol.json to the actual Go code. And we try to make that as idiomatic as we can, and I, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. And if you wanted to use uh, those raw API calls, you absolutely can. Uh, the API calls are set up like domain dot command name and then parameter one parameter two with option one and then dot do so this is if you're familiar with the go api sorry with the google go apis this is kind of the same style that they have um, and ours is all context based we're adding more and more features to the context but we haven't published uh, publicly released that yet uh, but this gives you an idea of, of how it works. And for those APIs that do have results, um, instead of returning them as uh, you know, a single struct, I made the decision to uh, break them out into separate uh, return variables, uh, just because I think that made more sense. And then ultimately what you get with that is the, uh, for those APIs that only return an error, Luckily, they all match essentially my action interface, which uh, I'll get into. So Chrome DP uh, is, is kind of broken up into four major kind of uh, pat package aspects, which is the client, the runner, the CDP domains, which I just discussed, and then the actual really high level action code, which is kind of the equivalent of Selenium. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into that API in just a minute. But the client and runner are interesting. The client just handles all the low-level um, uh, socket communication. It uses, we use Gorilla WebSocket just because uh, it's easy. Uh, and then the runner is a wrapper around actually launching a Chrome process, right? So what's nice about that is it allows you to uh, push all of the various uh, command line variables through command line options. Uh, and it works with Chrome, it works with Edge, it works with Headless Shell, it works with uh, some other things. And it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's really just a wrapper around OS exec, uh, as you probably are, many people are probably familiar with. Uh, then the high level actions and tasks, which is really kind of the cool part of this, is the actual Chrome DP package itself, right? So this is the syntax for launching Chrome DP and using it. So what we do is we create a, we create a context and then we essentially create a new instance uh, and we pass that context with some various variables. Uh, for instance here, this is a, a with log that will log all of the actual low level uh, Chrome uh, API calls. And then uh, we run a task list, which is, uh, I'll get into that interface here in a minute. And then uh, if you, when you're done running tasks, you shut down the Chrome process, and then you wait for Chrome to finish exiting cleanly. Uh, I know that this is not really kind of an ideal API, but we do have to kind of work around the way that Chrome in process 
the way that uh, processes are actually launched with Go, right? Uh, so actions and tasks. This is the kind of the Selenium equivalent, and it's these composable actions and these composable tasks are really what the real power is in Chrome DP. So actions are high-level wrappers around common browser tasks. Like think of it as like a use case of like a user clicks this button or a user takes a screenshot or whatever. Always think about it as the person who is driving the actual web browser, whether that's a person or whether that's Chrome DevTools. Uh, think of it like that. Uh, so it's a very simple interface. We've got the same, the do uh, here, which is just essentially the, you pass it a context and a handler. Handler is also a very special interface that essentially has an execute method on it that essentially uh, defines where you deliver and receive messages from on the wire. Uh, and that's handled by a frame, uh, a, sorry, a handler type, uh, sorry, a frame handler type in the uh, Chrome DP source code. Uh, then actions is essentially an aggregate set of actions and uh, because, they're, because tasks itself implements the action interface because it has its own do uh, on it, it allows you to compose sequ uh, sequential tasks. That means that you can define high level tasks as like let's say Google search as a function. And then you could say log in to Google Mail or something like that to Gmail as another like task hierarchy. And you can start composing that and essentially use Go as your logic tool to drive uh, whatever it is that, uh, that you're doing. If you're profiling or scraping or testing or whatever it is. So this is a high level Google search task, right? This is very arbitrary, but I just want to uh, show you that it does work. <laughs> so here we go. So uh, th this, is, this is the entirety of the code here, in, in co uh, as you can see. And then this is the Google search uh, function. So has, has anybody done Go build yet today? No? OK. <laughs> All right. I, I, I have, oops. So this is what you get on the output. This is all the actual wire stuff going through. And if you can see that what, what this thing did, um, so you see the first search results, Broncos easy money management, right? This was the actual text that was pulled from, the, from it. So just to kind of go over what these high level are, if you're familiar with Selenium's uh, kind of actions, uh, you can kind of get an idea or have an idea about what they do, which is we tell it to navigate to a page, we tell, it to, we tell uh, CDP to wait until that specific div element is visible. We then send keys manually, which is actually a pretty cool implementation. If you are interested in like, how that stuff works, check out the actual code. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have time to go into a lot of these, these things. Uh, we send keys, this is all Ajaxy and actually you know, happening or whatever. And then we wait visible for the, result, the resulting development. And then uh, the text, uh, what we do is we pull the text out. And uh, because we want everything to be type safe, what we're doing is uh, we are putting that as a, uh, uh, you know, you're passing a pointer to a string so that you can assign that value back to the original value. Um, and that's literally all that, at, all that it's doing. It's, it's not very complex. So this went really fast, and I, I just want to show you guys that um, what actually is happening is that when you run this, this is actually launching Chrome, and it's running. And I will show you, it, it's going to go pretty fast, even on this crappy MacBook Air from five years ago. Uh, but you'll see, if, if, I, if I can tab over fast enough, you'll actually see Chrome scraping the web page. That was it. So, <laughs> I, I mean, so it is, so what's interesting is, is that this does technically work with Microsoft Edge because they released a wrapper for the uh, uh, Chrome debugging protocol that drives, uh, you know, Edge in the same way. This works with Android web views, which we are using extensively at Broncos. It works with uh, Safari without any problems, okay? So 
if you wanted to replace Selenium in testing all of that, basically you could. It's just you couldn't test Firefox, right? And all of the other browsers today are basically all Chromium source tree based anyways. I mean, any big name one out there, Brave or whatever, there's 10,000 of them. So uh, that's, that's that. So you can kind of get an idea of the power of what's possible. And what's really great about this is that when you deploy this to production, you don't have to deploy the JVM. You don't have to deploy Chrome driver. While that's not exactly a giant dependency, we have found that when running that in production, all of those kind of extra bit, you know, bits and pieces that are separate moving parts just introduce, are just more places for failure to be. And I've, I personally have had giant problems with Chrome driver not working properly. So uh, I blame Google, so. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, anyways, uh, it's, it's really great. And because you ha now have all of the low-level components of Chrome available, you can do everything that's available via the Chrome debugging protocol, meaning you can stop JavaScript, like, in the middle of it. You can set a breakpoint. You could inject JavaScript. You can, uh, anything and everything that you could think of to do with the web browser, you can do from the highest levels in Go. And then you don't have to use like, you know, silly Java, you know, language. Um, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, one of the great things is that you can use Chrome DP then to do unit testing, right? So uh, the Chrome DP act source is actually kind of the best example of doing unit tests in Chrome DP because we run it to test all the various actions. Right, So uh, I would recommend using it with headless shell. And you just do standard Go testing, right? You, know, you have your standard you know, test tables. You set that up. And then we provide a simple high-level type called pool, which helps with launching headless shell instances. So in production, we are running uh, essentially Docker images on Kubernetes that, uh, including the full dependency on headless shell, our Go binaries, all of that kind of stuff, is deployed at less than 100 megabytes. Total size, okay? That's really kind of like phenomenal when you think about that, especially since with Headless Shell, uh, you can drive it uh, with very low memory requirements. So we, we put a maximum cap, and there's command line options in the package for this, on headless shell, uh, because we're using Go to manage the Linux process, we're using the system calls in the runner package to essentially set max memory limits and things like that on the process. So we cap out max memory at like a gigabyte, which means that we can run like 20 at the same time on the same, on the same image, whereas with Selenium, we could maybe only run two uh, Chrome instances simultaneously because it's difficult with Selenium. There's no a way that I am aware of in Selenium to cap the low level process like memory limits and stuff like that. So it's about bringing up to a high, like the highest levels, like really like, fin like finite control over all aspects of your scraping or profiling or whatever instances it is. And then again, you get to use Go, which is great. Um, so in the future, uh, we plan on making this fully embeddable, as I said. I really don't have an ETA on that, but hopefully in the next year. <laughs> it's, just, it's really difficult to like, you know, embed this giant you know, Chrome source tree. If you've ever worked with Chrome, it takes two hours to build like, on my fairly fast desktop at home. And I haven't even tried building it on this crappy MacBook Air, so I have no idea. Uh, but definitely more better high-level actions, and then we want to provide out-of-the-box profiling. We do our own profiling at Broncos, but we want to provide a better, like, out-of-the-box experience uh, than what exists today. So, uh, so that's basically it. So, quick note, Broncos, we are hiring. We're fully remote. So, anybody who would love to work for us and work on like really cool stuff like this, please contact me. Email me. Uh, I run the uh, Go Meetup in Jakarta, so if you're in Jakarta, please join us. And also, I'm the author of USQL and XO, so give me some love. And uh, no, no offense to uh, certain DGraph people, but I, I like SQL, so. <laughs> uh, 
Also, I, you guys did accept my PR on uh, DGraph at one point. So that's it. <laughs> so thank you. Seeing none. All right.